What's up, Brian Bat? What's going on, guys? Uh, here at Boss Bar Book Club, about to do some squats. Uh, so I want to talk about a few things today. We're going to talk about post-activation potentiation, what that is, how that's a misunderstood term, but how you can use something that is similar to that. It's not actually that. For your powerlifting programming, uh, I'm going to clear up some air on that. Also want to talk about just positioning uh, oblique activation in your squat and a couple other things. Uh, and I'm just going to take you through the workout. I got uh, some comp squats today, a really heavy single, followed by some lighter high bar work after that. Uh, I'll probably film Kristen's stuff too. She has something very similar on her program. And then I got some dumbbell bench and a few other things. So I'm going to take you through the whole workout. Uh, first, let's talk about post-activation potentiation. So this week weekend was my primary squat day. I am squatting four days a week currently. I'm actually reducing my frequency. So if you've been following me for a little bit, you know I've been squatting five days a week. I'm pulling that back by one day and adding in some more volume. I was on the Bulgarian method. I was only doing max singles. That was it. And then uh, you just kind of move on, squat every single day. I'm in the gym. Now I'm actually adding in some volume sets after my top sets and I'm pulling back the frequency. This is so I can time my peak better into my meet, which is in just under seven weeks from now. Uh, so this weekend I had a top single at RP8, I hit 573 pounds and then after that I had uh, some volume work at 534 pounds I think it was for a set of four. Now had I just gone to that 534 pounds without touching anything heavier, it actually would have felt a lot heavier uh, than it did. So that is what a lot of powerlifters will call post-activation potentiation. This is kind of a broken term, but what it means is basically when you do something really heavy, you know, a single, and not necessarily two failure, but maybe close to it, RP six to eight range. And then after that, you do some lighter volume work. The idea is that volume work, contrary to what you might think at first, will actually feel better than if you just built up to it fresh a lot of people might think, oh, that single would fatigue you. It's not the way it works. If you try this at home in your program, you'll see it actually works the complete opposite. Now, in the scientific literature, there's this thing called post-activation potentiation. However, uh, that literature is based on uh, power production, so explosive movements. The idea is you do a max out squat or something, like a one to three RM, and then go do some box jumps or some sprints, and they found your performance was actually elevated after you did a high um, fatigue, or excuse me, a high exertion squat, uh, you know, near failure or something like a single. Um, but that is post-activation potentiation. Powerlifters kind of took that term, applied it to the way we program it, but these are different physiological systems we're actually training, so we're not doing power production. We're working on strength uh, and hypertrophy, which is very different. So the idea is kind of the same though. You take something really heavy, do that before your volume work and it feels light. I also have that today. So there's two days where I do this. On my secondary squat day, I have sets of six after this, but sometimes I even hit sets of eight uh, on high bar, but I'm building up to a single at RP7, I think it is today, and then I back down to that. So the idea is hit something uh, heavy up, but nothing near failure, and then make my uh, back down volume feel light, my form's better, and it feels more like a breeze to get through. So I'm gonna take you guys through that. I hide my quads a lot. I got decently good quads. I also have the legs of a fucking giraffe. <laughs> but <laughs> at one point, these were a lot bigger, so I'm, I think they're about 29 inches. There's a point where I had 30 and a half. I've lost over an inch on my quads, and a lot of that just came from heat training. The Bulgarian method doesn't do a lot of volume, so that's another reason why I'm adding this volume. And my weak point is my quads. That's why they were really big at one point, because I used to train the shit out of them. And that's why I'm doing high bar squats, so train your weak points. Something I really like to do, pair a low bar or your competition style squat, for most of you that's gonna be low bar, uh, for a top set of the day, and then after when we're getting volume in, a lot of the time I'm gonna aim that volume at the weak points, you know, things that are gonna actually have carry over to your squat. You keep abusing that comp squat pattern, that could be good at the last end of a meat rep, but even on a day like this, my secondary day, I'm trying to get volume in on the squats, because that has more carry over to my squat than just abusing my comp squat. So that right there is the working weight that I'm gonna have for my back down for something really close to this. Uh, and normally, like right now, that feels a little heavy, it feels a little off, but I'm gonna keep going, wake up a little bit, get something to a lot heavier than that, and when I come back to this weight, it's gonna be fucking smoke. So what are you focusing on with your warm-up sets, your acclimation? I'm putting you on the spot. Um, today, I'm doing kind of like lighter volume sets. Um, working on kind of staying in my quads out of the hole. So my problem is I used to shoot back my hips out of the hole. 
um, lose a lot of tension there. So I'm warming up with paw squats to kind of practice coming up in the way that I come down. I'll try to like mimic that position. Smooth, smooth, on camera too. I'm very coordinated. Bro, what, are you in like RPS? What, what kind of fed is this, you using a mono? Yes. Mono, that's not USAPL legal. I'm gonna swap trend just to too? parallel to make it comp specific. <laughs> Bro, you're gonna bomb out. But I got it done. All right, finish up my high bar. Uh, so I had that comp squat and then followed by uh, the sets of high bar after. Now moving on to some competition bench. So I thought I had only dumbbell bench today. I missed right the program. I got a top set of four at RP seven or eight. Don't quote me on that look right now. And then after I got some dumbbell bench. Um, really on my competition bench, guys, I said this in another video on Instagram, but I didn't post on YouTube. Uh, I moved to Pinky on the ring for my comp grip width. I don't like a wider grip on bench. I'm weaker, I'm slower, and this is really common. It has to do with muscle mass um, and the way your clavicles and muscle bellies are really set up. That's a video for another time. Uh, but for me, I find closer works better. Rule of thumb, usually the more muscular the person, they tend to do better actually with the closer grip and feel stronger. And then likewise, um, usually when it's females or guys uh, who aren't as muscular and didn't have more of like a bodybuilding background coming up, they tend to do better with leverage, you know, arching their way to a bench press. Neither is wrong or right. I don't want to start a fucking fight over that. The best benchers in the world, uh, most of them actually arch pretty big. Although, uh, what's that guy's name? Amadola or whatever the hell? That fucking crazy bencher at Nats. I, I was unaware of this guy, but that motherfucker, he doesn't have that crazy of an arch and he benches a lot. Same thing with some of the best benches in the world. They can be close grip too. So there's, there's no one way of doing it guys, but I'm gonna hop on the bench press and show you that workout. some dumbbell bench so I hit up my top set of four it was supposed to be RPA it's probably like an eight and a half I really just uh, messed up my grip on it but 345 especially that RP for that many reps is really good my best ever is five like from a couple weeks ago but I started dealing with some tendinopathy so I'm doing a lot of my back down volume now on dumbbell bench because it's a little bit healthier for my pecs but I think I figured something out today to work on that so I'm gonna smoke these 120s this is just kind of a build up set to get some extra volume in and then we'll go ahead here we're gonna go full range of motion on any arch shit. So like even if you are an arch bencher, you shouldn't be doing your dumbbell bench with like a huge arch or trying to limit wrong. Champ is here. <laughs> So I'm gonna go for the 140s, but the thing is, if you add up the weights on here, 
These aren't actually 140. It's probably closer to 147 and a half, depending on the dumbbell weight, because this will add up to that 140, but it doesn't take into account these handles. These handles usually weigh about anywhere from five to 10 pounds. So there's even some of the Avanco handles that are like 12 and a half pounds. Uh, so what I'm basically saying is it says 140, it's probably 250. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we'll go weigh it after. We'll see. Maybe I'm lying on my ass. Maybe they actually are accurate, but I don't think so. We'll weigh that shit. Oh. It's not that I'm lazy. I just don't want to waste energy. Oh, you're going to have to. Yeah. You got it. Oh. I never touched this. Come on. Come on. So I went with no legs. That was hard. Wow. Well, she should be less. <laughs> we don't look It's like 120. That's what we call moated. <laughs> Okay, exactly. Now, nah, 0.6, we counted that 0.6. That was 140.6 in each hand, kids. <laughs> it's accurate, fuck. <laughs> Close enough. What's up guys, so I just want to close out this vlog, do a little voiceover, explain a couple more things because my camera died, but I want to talk about prisons workout. I also want to talk about the obliques and quad dominance in a squat and the importance of training your quads, uh, training your brace and the execution of movement. So Kristen, you'll notice we had a similar setup to our day, but I want to explain the differences. So Kristen, instead of having a top single, she actually had some volume work on her competition squat because she needs a lot more practice and volume on the comp squat than I do. Females tend to respond to higher volumes. Um, she's a female, obviously. So we need to get in some good comp squat volume. So I'm not necessarily saying with the post-activation potentiation stuff that you always only just want to do singles or something like that. I kind of do it in a different way with her. Now again, post-activation potentiation is a broken term, but uh, just having something heavier followed by some lighter back off uh, and specifically for both of us some non-specific back off this can be very beneficial because it can make that volume work feel like a breeze and you get like a lot more out of it so for her instead of having a top single she had a three by three on her comp squat that was heavier I'll show that I'll put the number on the screen um, and so that was like kind of her quote unquote top set but it's really just volume work on her comp squat and this is actually a taper week the weeks before this because it's the final week of training block they're actually a lot higher volume so we're uh, doing as many I think as five sets on this day with more reps um, now after that she does her high bar work uh, and it always ends up being lighter. This is because I know how to program for her, so I know uh, for her high bar, uh, certain how many reps at a certain RP, like what that'll equate to with load on the bar, give or take. Um, and so her back down work was build up sets of eight on the high bar until RP seven. So she started, I think, somewhere around like 155-ish and then got up to around 170 something. I'll put it all on the screen. Uh, and that was less than her competition squat work. So she still gets in good volume on her comp squat. So I'm not necessarily necessarily saying the way you want to do this is one only with just variations you can do post activation potentiation or whatever the hell you want to call it the heavier work with your comp squat and then back down to lighter comp squat stuff you can do it with a variation where you go back down to high bar it doesn't matter but the idea is whether you want to get in some volume or you want to get in a heavy single and then back down to some lighter stuff it's a really good way to get in your work because then the lighter stuff honestly feels like a breeze after that she did have some bench press so you'll notice again both of us were squatting benching kind of doing that stuff 
similar day in her training program, but the difference is her, she's gonna get more total volume again on her comp movement. Now, she's a very big arch bencher. Uh, she's a female, so she handles higher volumes uh, more than males do. Uh, it's a very common theme until the, the you get to the heavier women's classes, then they don't handle it as much. But uh, for her, we had build up sets of five until RP8. She actually hit a PR. She hit 132 pounds for five reps at RP8. That is a huge PR, especially the way it moved. It's both ability and like a volume PR. Um, so she smoked that and then she had some back down sets on her bench press. So for her, she actually gets a lot more total volume and even exertion on her comp bench. As for me, I do a lot of my volume on the things like dumbbell bench that you saw me doing or close grip Larson or close grip work. Um, and that's just so I can stay healthy. My range of motion is a lot longer. Uh, I don't handle volume as well. And there's just a lot of factors that go into me selecting something a little bit more joint friendly and um, a little bit more variation dominant because of the way I bench and, and just factors like that. So for her, it's again, we have kind of similar workouts, similar ideas here, but we're implementing it and uh, refining it around her individuality. And I think that's something a lot of people miss. Now, lastly, just to talk about the high bar squats real quickly, I had some high bar squats, just like Chris and mine were like slightly less reps, but you'll notice um, I was really working on position execution. So this is huge. So if you're doing a high bar squat, okay, what are we trying to get out of that? For me, I'm trying to get a lot more quad dominance and a lot more core bracing going on, getting out of uh, extension, because I do kind of overextend when I squat, and getting out of external rotation like too much. I, I really like, you know, send my knees out, really sit back into my squat, extend my back. So I'm trying to actually do the opposite. So, you know, for me, I can probably high bar 500 for reps. I've high bar squatted 600 pounds. Actually, recently, I'll put that on the screen. <laughs> a really bloody set that was really fucking fun uh, and I smoked that 600 pounds so I could probably do 500 for sets of six easy but I'm not gonna do that because it's n I'm not gonna be able to maintain the form I want so for me I'm trying to load into my quads and knees more I'm trying to keep my pelvis under me not overextend really get my obliques on that's what I was talking about earlier in the video I was really focused on getting my obliques to uh, sorry, I got fucking geese here, dude. I live like next to a lagoon. Get my obliques to engage into my belt, keep me out of overextension, and really just load more onto my interior portion of my body. So obliques, core, and quads. Now again, I could just load up a heavy high bar and fucking do that, but that's not gonna have as much carryover. So execution of your variation is hugely important because if you just move like shit on those variations, I think this is where a lot of people are like, oh, I don't get anything out of high bar, or I don't get anything out of front squats or this or that. Well, it's probably because you're not executing them correctly or you're just using them for no purpose and there's really no rhyme or reason as to why you're even programming that. So make sure there's a rhyme and a reason and you're executing according to that rhyme and reason. That's the video, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Give it a thumbs up, share the video, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.